Hi everyone, I hope you're good. Today's class is a little bit different where we're slowing the pace down. So what I've got with me is one yoga block and a strap, but if you haven't got that, I want you to grab a cushion instead. I'm hoping you've got one on your sofa. And if you haven't got a yoga strap, then I want you to grab maybe an old belt. Obviously just be careful of the metal bit at the end that it doesn't kind of land in your face or clip you somewhere. You're not going to be fun. So just grab those things now, obviously hit the pause button, and then come and meet me back on your mat. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to prop my blocks, if you're using a different proper course, then use that instead, could be a cushion, underneath the buttocks there. So once you've done that, make sure you're sitting comfortably and you feel like you're sitting yourself up nice and tall and that's what I do like about using a prop especially if you're using a yoga block is that it just adds a few extra vertebrae to your spine so if you've been hunched over recently um, it just really helps to remind you oh okay this is how I should be sitting <laughs> whoopsie okay so we're going to position the hands there onto the knees or onto the thighs and of course with you sitting up nicely just find that imaginary wall behind you it could be that it's literally about half an inch away and that you're kind of sitting forwards just like I do it's bad I know so what we're going to do is we're going to reach the arms out to the side so um, just turn the palms of the hands to face upwards towards the ceiling like you're kind of holding on to a couple of little bowls of water or rice there um, in the hand. We're just going to close the eyes, take a deep inhale through the nose and a long exhale out through the mouth. Shoulders moving down and away from the ears but don't drop those bowls. Take note of the inhales, how you can expand through the rib cage, through the chest but also the fingertips as well, you might find that, oh, you can actually bring the arms a little bit further apart there. Good. And whenever you're ready, we're going to reopen the eyes. Now forget that you're holding onto those bowls, you can just let them fall on the floor now, because you're going to rotate those wrists so your thumbs are pointing downwards. Or you might find, oh, you can move your arms even further with that internal rotation, and maybe the palms are starting to face up towards the ceiling. And then we're going to turn the other way again. So you're going to go between the two. See how that feels. It gets to a point where you're like, oh, that's not too bad. And then you keep trying to rotate. You're like, oh, OK. Hello, shoulders. All right. Now, the bowls that you were holding on to, now I want you to see if you can go slightly the other way. So keep your arms straight and your palms facing up. But what will happen is you'll try and do an external rotation. So your little finger will try and move towards the sky and you try and turn your palms to face behind you i know it feels really weird and then go the other way and again to turn palms facing the back we'll do one more because your arms get tired doing this don't they and then back to center oh hello shoulders and roll them around towards the back Okay, so we're gonna come off the block for a moment. All right, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna position your prop there behind you. Okay, so I'm sitting here with the feet out in front of me, knees are bent, prop is behind me. Now, it might take you a couple of goes to try and get this one where I've got the palms of the hands just behind me. I'm gonna lower down onto the elbows, especially if you're working with your block or maybe you haven't done this before or for a while, just, uh, take it nice and slow, but it's on the bra strap line area of your body, so underneath the um, shoulder blades, okay? And so once you've done that, you might be able to slide your hands further away. I personally would have one or both hands there to support the neck, so hands behind the neck, uh, the head, the head, ponytail area of the head, and then slowly lower the head down towards the earth. Good job. So depending on your cushion, it could be that the cushion, if it's quite a big, um, dense one, that it might be really opening up the front body, or it could be quite mild if you've got a flat cushion, of course. See how it feels. So if it doesn't feel quite right, you can start again, but sometimes what I advise students to do is, because that can be a bit of an upheaval, I would interlace the hands, or cross the arms, sorry, like you're giving yourself a pretend hug, and then keep the knees bent, but then just wriggle side to side a little bit, lowering the buttocks down, and trying to wriggle so that you're a bit more comfy on your props. It could be that you're trying to wriggle just, it could be that you're just out by you know a couple of millimeters and that will make the biggest of difference just moving that rather than having to sort of sit up and then back down it's just 
bit of a pain, isn't it? So whenever you're ready, we're gonna reach one or both thumbs up and overhead. And feel as if someone's grabbing onto the wrist. And in fact, you can do this to yourself where you take, say, the right hand onto the right arm, uh, the right hand. <laughs> the right hand onto the left arm. So I wouldn't grab onto the wrist, I'd grab a little bit higher, sort of in between elbow to wrist, yeah, a bit more of the meatier part of the arm. And then see if you can take the arm to stretch up. So you'll feel the shoulder will come up towards the ear, that's okay, that's fine. Big stretch, it looks really weird, it looks like I'm sort of <laughs> collapsed on the floor, but yeah, it feels good. <laughs> and then relax, and then you're gonna change sides. So again, I've got left hand holding onto the right forearm, take it overhead, ah, and then use that to stretch out. Well, I can feel like even my neck wanted to turn to the side with this one. I obviously needed it. And do your breathing. Good. And then from here, slowly come down. We're gonna move away from the block, so slowly sit yourself up. I'm up onto the elbows, then up onto the palms. I slide the block away. This time, block is gonna go underneath the lower part of the back. So you can do this first of all by laying yourself down onto your back, and then lift the hips up like you're doing bridge pose and pop it, so it's just on the sacrum area, just kind of above the butt cheeks. You'll kind of be able to feel, so not on the lower part of your back where you've got that natural curve and S shape that's so uncomfortable, not so great. So it has to be kind of above the buttocks there. All right, so you can always lift the hips up and fidget around with that one if it takes you a while to, to, for it to feel comfortable. Once you've done that, we're gonna play around with lifting one or both legs up towards the ceiling. All right, so again, it doesn't look anything special, but Oh, it feels so lovely. And I mean, I personally wouldn't do this, but you can always rest either another yoga block, and that's not too bad, um, or you can get a book to rest on the feet. But again, I like, personally think that's a bit dangerous to do just because, well, you might drop the book on your head. <laughs> so yeah, don't do that. But yeah, in case you're thinking, oh, I've done that before with another yoga teacher. If it's okay for you, that's fine. But yeah, we don't, we don't want anything landing on us in our practice. Palms of the hands on top of the belly, feet together, close the eyes, three breaths. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling out through the mouth. Shoulders moving away from the ears. Navel moving down towards the spine. Maybe on your, on your third breath now. Good, and whenever you're ready, reopen the eyes, lower the feet down one at a time, lift the hips up, slide your block and prop out the way, so you roll yourself up, and we're going to go on to all fours where we've got shoulders above wrists and hips stacked above the knees, so I'm just going to pop my props there, so they're not in my way. So once we're here on all fours, we're going to come into cat and cow, round the spine, letting the head move down. And then, of course, moving into cat pose. So go between the two postures, linking them seamlessly. Maybe close the eyes into a place of where you're feeling it more rather than just kind of nodding the head. All right. Now, with the shoulders, let's see if we can tap into the upper part of the back. We're going to come back onto all fours. Now, take the knees nice and wide apart. If you're working on a yoga mat, about the width of your yoga mat is pretty good. Big toes touch together and you've got to walk the hands back towards the feet. Towards the feet, towards the knees, wrong body part. <laughs> okay, so about halfway. So you don't want to quite sit on, on the heels, all right? Now you're going to lift right hand up towards the sky. Now this right elbow is going to come down towards the floor. It doesn't have to touch and then lift back up. Take some nice deep breaths. And if you want to do, you know, add a bit more into it, thread the needle instead. So you can start threading the arm through that gap between the palm and the knee. That's pretty good as well. And you can move slower than me, you can move up the pace a little bit. It's up to you. Please don't move in the same time as me. That's kind of the wrong thing to do, believe it or not. You want to make sure that it's all relative to you. 
and you're breathing, you don't want to go lightheaded or anything. Now we're going to go over toward the other side. So I'm going to start off where I've got elbow towards the floor. So again, please don't compare. If, you, if your elbow isn't reaching towards the floor, you're not doing anything wrong. Please don't tell yourself, oh, I'm not very flexible, I can't do this. None of that negative chat. We want to make sure it's all working for us. So your elbow will touch the floor one day. It's just about practice. And now you could be threading if you haven't done already. Oh, see the thing is, if I lay down like that, I wouldn't want to get off the floor. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I'll just stay here for a bit. So yeah, don't quite commit to laying down. Okay, so how did that feel? Come back onto all fours. I'm gonna sit back and I'm just gonna roll around the wrists. Just take your breather. Maybe take the wrist in the opposite position completely. So you don't really see this type of work, do you? But this, a lot of this stuff happens in a real yoga practice. There's breaks. You could be having a cup of tea next to you. You could be making notes and that's okay. Don't ever feel like it's got to be like one continuous vinyasa flow and it has to be like really powerful and you have to be dripping with sweat. Like that is a yoga practice but it's not everybody's yoga practice, so you do you. So we're gonna come up onto all fours. Down, oh, up. <laughs> is it down, is it up? Down or facing dog? I mean, they called it down or dog, down. <laughs> so we're up here, we're gonna take a nice walk on the spot, and I want you to alternate between bending and straightening out the legs. When you're doing this pose, find some stillness for a moment, okay? Now, if I was with a student, obviously I'd be able to demo this a lot easier, but of course I'm, I am the student here. I'm demoing, I'm also the demo model here as well. So from downward dog, I want you to think about, if it was obviously on both sides of the body, the thighs moving back and up, back and up with the thighs. Yeah, that direction. So when you're in this, if you come up onto the balls of the feet, you can feel the hips lifting higher, which is good but the thighs moving up and back. So I typically, as long as a student's happy with me doing this, of course, uh, position a belt round the thighs, or but like just one strap around both thighs and lift and pull them up a little bit, just to give them a bit more space to access there in the back. And then from here, I'm gonna walk the feet towards the back, going into plank. All right, and from plank, if you wanna take, should we take a milder chaturanga? We'll take the knees down, mermaid plank. Chaturanga dandasana down. And lift up into cobra. Oh. Now you're going to find your cushion next. So push the bum back. All right. Now cushion block. You can use two blocks if you've got those. You can also use your coffee table. It's pretty good as well. Um, you can also do this from standing and use your kitchen countertop. Yeah. So get creative. Um, if you're only using, or you could use a cushion, you could put two cushions on top of one another at this point. So I just want you to feel like you've got some options here. All right, now I'm coming into just an alternative child's pose. So I've got big toes together, knees about hip distance apart, and hands obviously resting and the head moving down. So you want to feel like the arms are nice and long, so you notice that I'm not sort of bending the elbows and kind of crashing down into my crop or down towards the floor. And also the back is nice and long as well. And what you might find is that you can lift your head up a little bit and either kind of creep your prop, sliding it forwards, wriggling it forwards, or even the knees back a little bit to get deeper and provide more length here for the upper body. Lots of breathing. Like I said, it's from the outside, doesn't look like much is going on, but from the inside, all the work is happening. And I'm gonna be really slowly come up. Okay, pop your block out to the side. Now, the next one that we're going to do we're working on trying to manipulate the shoulder joint here for an external rotation. So we'll just talk about external rotation really quickly. External rotation, we'll talk, uh, where should we take them? Take you into something you know. The hands, whether you're standing, whether you're kneeling, down by the sides of the body. Let me turn this way there, okay? This would say is a neutral position here for the shoulders. If we take the hands out in front, because that's a little bit of an easier way to uh, demo it, 
As soon as we start taking the hand out to the sides, this is our external rotation. Whoop, the shoulders going out. And as soon as the fingertips are facing one another, we have an internal rotation. So neutral, external, internal. All right. We're going to be working on that external rotation. So notice when the shoulders are hunched in. I wouldn't suggest that the shoulders are doing a complete internal rotation, but they're kind of going in that direction. So we want to make sure when we're, you know, standing, sitting, that we're trying to promote a nice openness here of the shoulders and of the chest. So we don't want to be in external rotation all the time, but of course, we just try and go to the opposite direction of if we're, you know, feeling not so great in ourselves, whether it's something to do with, you know, just um, circumstances, things going on, there's a lot of stress going on, or it could be down to injury, or it could be down to, yeah, you get the idea. I'll stop rambling. So we'll come up onto all fours, shoulders above wrist, hips stacked above knee. We're going to wrap. Does it work if I'm this ankle? All right. Sorry for moving around, but I want to make sure you can see all of this. Um, we've got right hand wrapping around and underneath <laughs> this left shoulder. <laughs> Even just that feels weird already, doesn't it? And what we're going to do is we're going to slowly rotate and get an external rotation. So what happens is, is that I pull the fingertips down whilst holding onto the shoulder, like it's trying to slide down. All right, but keep hold of that shoulder, okay? And I feel like with the right elbow, it kind of sticks out to the side, it's very awkward. And then lean back and down. <sighs> Good, come back to center and do the same again. Wrap and hold up, roll, and then back. One more time. Holding on, get as high as you can up to the shoulder and roll, get that external rotation, pull back. Good. And then back to center, we're gonna change sides. Holding on whew, to that right shoulder. So I can already feel this left shoulder just feels like, yeah, it feels like it gets it. Whereas this right shoulder feels like it needs to play catch up. All right, so left arm hooks around. All right, roll back and down. And again, two more times, nice deep breaths. Roll, so you get kind of your body to face out to the side a little bit, and down. And again, holding up, opening up, and back down. Good job. And from here, slowly come back up to center. I'll move my mat, hopefully back into somewhat an original position. We're gonna be uh, working with our strap neck, so make sure you get yourself nice and set up with your scarf, with your belt, or maybe you've got a yoga strap already at home. Okay, so I've unraveled it. If you've got a buckle at the end of your belt or your yoga strap, I want you to make sure you hold on to it so it's not flinging around in your face. It's not very nice. Um, and then crisscross the legs or the feet, or sit comfortably. You can do this on a chair as well if you want to. Really hope with this shot, it's not gonna cut off my arms here, my hands here in this position. All right, so um, I would say, it's definitely less than a meter, but a little bit wider than the shoulder width apart. It's pretty good. And take that above and overhead. This is nothing groundbreaking, but we never do stuff like this, and yet it's so good for the shoulders. So what I want you to think about doing is just taking a few shoulder shrugs. <laughs> so from a nice lifted position, of course, sit yourself up nice and tall, engage your core navel to spine, find that imaginary wall behind you, and what you're gonna do is shoulder shrug, lift the shoulders up, and of course, in turn, lift the hands up towards the sky a bit more. And then on your exhale, with control, lowering the shoulders down. And again, inhale, it's lift up. On your exhale, down. And again, inhale to lift up. Exhaling down. So what you're doing is trying to manipulate not just the shoulders itself, but also well, the entire shoulder girdle, so the shoulder blades as well. So the scapula starts sliding a little bit like butter, getting less trapped and less stuck, which is really good for us. We're going to take it out to the side now. So we've got up with the arms. You don't have to shoulder shrug necessarily this one, but if it helps, lift um, the shoulders and the shoulder blades up slightly to help you. Grab a bit more length, and you can see I'm tipping to the side here, trying to keep the trunk of the body nice and long. 
and you get a nice mild stretch here along the side body. I say mild, <laughs> it's, it's different for everyone and it also depends on how far you're going. And then back to center, up and then over again. My face can't lie in these ones, it's so hard to keep like a poker face. It's like, I can really feel it. And then back to center, over towards the other side. And over towards the other side again. And then back to center, and from here slowly come down. Don't let this go far away because you're going to use it now to lay yourself down and we'll stretch out the hamstrings. Okay, so you can use your cushion if you want to. It could be underneath the head, it could be underneath the shoulders. It can also be underneath the, um, just above the butt cheeks like we did before, but just bear in mind your sensations might result in being ever so slightly different to kind of what the cues that I'm saying. So just be mindful of that. Uh, to be on the safe side, if you're using a cushion at the back of the head, try not to use a really thick one as that will kind of overly lift the neck and we don't want to do that in this position here. So for, a, for something safer, maybe just use the floor, but you can use your prop if you want to. Okay, so the knees are bent. I'm going to have the ribs in, they will just fine. And I'm going to hook the um, sole of the foot, bridge of the foot, there onto the strap again. I'm holding onto the metal part just to be safe if you've got any buckles or any metal parts to what you're using. And um, something that we see often is that the student has the hands really close in towards the body. And what I would say is I personally would have the arms reaching out, okay, rather than close in. It can feel a bit awkward. So reach, 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 because if you weren't working with a prop, you'd be holding on to like the hamstrings or holding onto the calf or possibly holding onto the foot or some toes as well. Keep the leg in alignment there with the hip. And then it's about time. <laughs> Patience. Lots of breathing. And slowly inviting the leg a little bit closer in. Now, if your leg is uncontrollably shaking, no, you're affecting nerves and ligaments. Not good. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you back off a little bit. Don't let your ego get in the way. And just wear your leg at here, here. It doesn't matter. That's where you're at. Just roll with it. And if you want to, you can straighten your left leg out there in front of you. So keep the left leg in alignment there with the hip as well. Lots of breathing going on. And I will admit, like I've totally been there where I've really just kind of kept yanking this leg, like as if doing that will kind of yank it into submission. Um, pulsing the leg, I've seen where people, you know, do this, where it's kind of more of a ballistic style of um, trying to stretch. I personally would stay away from, um, unless you're working with maybe a dancer or um, a contortionist that's a really good coach and they know what they're doing. Um, I personally would do that um you definitely want to be in the right hands of someone who's into that style of training and that won't help you out unless you're with you know someone that coaches that style and knows the safety of that and the risks and you're going to change sides from here so i ease off okay so do you see how i switch feet I know that sounds really sad, but yeah, you'd be amazed at how many people just go like, what do I do? And you're like, oh, well, the, the foot's up there. So you just take over and switch and that's it, okay? So we do the same on the other side. So just, I say that, but do we? Mm. So I've got the left leg lifted, but I have to treat this completely differently. Even if these legs were twins, I would still have to treat them differently. So you don't, you know, you don't just go in with the same like agenda this is a different leg it has different feelings <laughs> to the other side it does right one side of the body is so different to the other so this side is feeling pretty good today i'm going to admit like it's not feeling mega tight like it usually is and then extend the right leg out in front of you if you want to i can feel it starting to shake just a little bit so i'm going to ease off just another inch Now, I don't like using timers that much for my yoga practice, but there are times that I do stick a timer on 
So you can either measure your what you're doing by your breath. So you could say, I'm gonna do six breaths holding this pose, okay? Or if you want to, you can always add your timer in. And I'd start off at, you know, holding for 30 seconds, but that does go by quite quickly. Um, and then building it up to 45 to a minute and so on. Um, you know, aim isn't to get to like five minutes, you can slowly come out, but um, you can slowly build it up to, I think some, I don't do this for all of the postures, like loads of postures, but for some things that I'm working on, you know, I'll make my way up to like three minutes, but that's built over years. That's been, <laughs> that's been going like, yeah, don't do it right now. That would just be crazy. Okay, let's see all of our practice today. Hope you're feeling a little bit more stretched out. Maybe this has got you ready for another one. Maybe you could do revisit the full body or maybe you're gonna be doing some hips and legs. Or if you're a member, you're heading over to the member site at the moment, then you're gonna be carrying on with a vinyasa flow. Who knows? Let me know how you get on. Let's see enough of our practice today. We're gonna to, um, sit ourselves nice and tall, roll the shoulders back, inhale, reach the hands up towards the sky. And slowly bring the thumbs down towards the third eye for your vision and dreams. Down towards the mouth and throat for clear speech, good conversation, immunity. Down towards the chest and heart for love, compassion, and finally down towards the lower part of the belly for good instincts, fire, and healthy digestion. Thank you so much for doing a nice, slow, steady practice with me. Um, we did a vote on Instagram with, would it be slow and steady or would it be energizing, something like that, and um, you guys voted in. So I'm gonna add that to my Instagram, I'll make sure I put it on highlights so that way you can vote for classes, you can put your input for classes as well, you can let me know if you've got any ideas, uh, because I know it's a bit of a rigmarole doing it sometimes through email, um, so it, it might be just easier doing it via Instagram on my highlights, uh, because most people are on there anyways. And it's a bit harder on Facebook to interact, I find, whereas Instagram is so much easier. So yeah, head over to my Instagram, I'll add it as a highlight, and that way you can always request a class or let me know if you've got any problem areas send me a snapshot and then I can either add it into the class or we can do it as a completely separate thing so I won't waffle on anymore carry on whether it's more yoga or you're carrying on with your day I hope you're feeling good I hope you're feeling okay if you're watching this right now we're still in a, in a lockdown and things are really sort of uneasy and stuff so hang in there I'm sure you're doing great. Just keep on going. Lots of love. Stay warm. Stay safe. Mwah. See you next time.